Good morning, everybody. This is your boy D-Mac. Let's talk. All right. So we're going to get into something today that is going to uh, bring about a conversation because we've had this conversation. And when I say we, I'm speaking of uh, black people and the white nationalist people. Um, we've often had this conversation about the flag. We go back to Colin Kaepernick when Colin Kaepernick, he decided to have a peaceful protest and take a knee during the uh, national anthem. And we see how that resulted for Colin Kaepernick. We have, uh, I did a show about Mara Moore and she decided to sit out um, two seasons from the WNBA to help a family member who was being unjustly um, dealt with in the judicial system. We have more and more incidents and things that are occurring with our people in this country and it don't make any sense that we should have to fight for human rights. And so we've often talked about the national anthem and why our people uh, are in more of a high number at a higher rate deciding to not honor the national anthem, especially going to um, the young lady who recently had the issue at the Olympics, Miss Gwen Berry. Um, so I took it upon myself to go and listen to the national anthem in its entirety, all the verses, and really get an understanding of where the issue lies because I've heard bits and pieces, but I never sit down and really took the time to analyze it for myself. And so this is what I did this morning. And I would like to first say before I go into this, that everything that I say right now is my view. It's my opinion. It's my truth. If you don't agree with my truth and my opinion, that's perfectly fine. I have no love lost for you. You have every right to, just like I have every right to believe what I believe and every right to say what I say and um, whatever comes with it. I'm willing to bring it. I'm willing to face it and confront it because that is going to open up a doorway for us to have the conversation. And that's my goal every single time is finding a solution because I'm a solution oriented person. And so with that, I'm going to go into what I dug up and what I found from my perspective. First and foremost, Francis Scott Key, we all know he's the uh, author of the Star Spangled Banner. And we all know that the Star Spangled Banner is in reference to the War of 1812, whenever Britain came down through um, Canada and all of that. And they had black slaves who had deserted and went and joined up with the British Army to fight against America, and they actually took over the White House and burned down the White House during this battle. And so this is where the emotion and the feeling of the, the uh, Star Spangled Banner is coming from. So that's just the backstory to let you see what emotion Mr. Key had when he wrote this and apparently the rest of the country felt the same way because they made this the national anthem so um first and foremost it's broken down into four different parts okay and so the third verse is the actual verse that we want to pay close attention to it's not the second verse everybody says the second no it's the third verse out of the four verses. And so I started to write down right here at the beginning of the third verse. And it says, when our land is illumined with liberty's smile. Now, think about illumined, the illuminated ones. See where they're going with that. Um, if a foe from within strikes a blow at her glory... 
What foe from within is going to strike a blow at America? Whenever the War of 1812 took place, all of the uh, so-called civilized Americans were on board with each other to fight against an outside source or an outside force. So who were the, the foes from within? Because the foe is not an enemy. I mean, well, no, I take that back. A foe is an enemy. So who is this enemy from within that they're talking about? Okay, this enemy is us. Because the next line goes on to say, Down with the traitor that dares to defile the flag of her stars and the page of her story or his story. See, what they're saying right there is anybody who was within and considered themselves an enemy, which they know the slaves were an enemy to the masters, the ones who had that idea that I'm going to go and join this other army to fight against them. How dare you turn on us? You're a traitor because we took you in and we gave you a house and we let you work our fields. How dare you be a traitor and turn on us and go and fight against us with those other people because you want to be free and treated like a human. You traitor. How dare you try to mess up our history? You're not going to defile our flag and our stars in the page of our history or her story. They said her story in the verse, but we know what her story is. It's the story that the conqueror tells. The conqueror always tells the story in their narrative. And by us joining up with Britain and coming down and defeating them and taking over the White House and burning it down, we're threatening the story. We're threatening the so-called conqueror's story. And they put it in there. But you don't never hear them sing this verse. So let's go a little bit further with this. It says, goes on to say, by the millions unchained who our birthright have gained. So slaves, they felt like slaves were their birthright. Yeah. And we, we've seen it. We've all seen the documentation. We've seen all of the stories, all of the movies, everything, every piece of information you want to know on how slaves were passed down to generations of children from when the father dies, the slave stays with the son. It, come on. They felt we were a birthright. They had a right to have us as slaves. And so they said, by the millions unchained who our birthright have gained, we will keep our bright blazing forever unstained. Talking about their flag, talking about their story, their history, the, the, the story that they want to tell and the narrative that they're going to go on to push throughout the rest of time. And this is where we are now. And that third verse ends like this. It doesn't say, or the land of the... No, it says, while, while the land of the free is the home of the brave. That's how the third verse ends. And so now we have a clear understanding of when Miss Gwen Berry takes a uh, turns her back to the national anthem this is why these words these declarations that are hidden in the nation's um anthem that they want us to honor that totally dishonors us as a people Dishonoring us for wanting to have freedom and calling us traitors. Calling us traitors because we wanted to be treated like humans. This is the anthem that they want us as black people to stand up and put our hand over our heart to. This is the anthem that I fought for when I was in the military. This is what they desire from us. They want us to shut up, do our jobs to make them more money and to make them entertained. And we should be thankful that they give us this opportunity in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Okay, 
So when you understand the clear narrative and what's being said, stop and take time to listen to what's actually being said, because the words that are being said are really important. And if you don't understand, take the time to look something up so that you have a clear understanding because it's right there in the fine print. All of those things that they say that you don't understand is just a way for them to uh, take accountability. Well, I said it to everybody. They may not have understood the way I said it because I used a different jargon than probably nobody understands but i told everybody that gives them a sense of accountability so look between the lines read the lines read between the lines read behind them read in front of them just read man and and understand what's taking place how the brainwashing has went forth this was in 1812 that was in 1812, uh, so he wrote it in, I, I think it says 1813, and then in 1814 is when America came back and actually started winning the battle, and that's when he wrote it because he was able to write it from a victor's place, because back when the, uh, when the White House was burning, no, nah, that wasn't the time. They was in no place of morale to write a victory song and to write a song of triumph. That came later in 1813, going into 1814, whenever America started coming back and beat the British back. Okay, so those slaves, salute to y'all, man, for for thinking about your family and thinking about the generations of your children that would be free because of the decision you made to escape the United States oppression and go to a nation who was going to offer you an opportunity to have something in your life. I salute you. I salute Gwen Berry. And this is your boy D-Mac. I'm out.